Hey everyone, Greg here from the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. And in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the camera system on the Vision Laser Machine by We Create. Thanks for joining me for another video and I can't wait to share with you everything about the camera system on this machine. If you're not familiar with the We Create Vision machine, this includes a built-in integrated camera system that is pre-calibrated with the Make It software. Now this machine does come in a white 20 watt version and the space gray in 40 watts. However, the camera system and the software both work the same no matter what machine we're going to be taking a look at. Inside the machine, I already have my first graphic placed inside. We'll take a look at the Make It software and to capture that image, all I need to do is press the refresh button. I'll wait a second or two while it loads that image onto my screen and here it is. All it is is simply a piece of printer paper with some graphics printed on it. We'll also see that when I place that inside of the machine, I kind of threw it down at an angle. And this is one of the great things about a camera system is you don't have to have things perfectly aligned when placed inside of the machine. That's part of the point of having a camera system. The first thing I need to do is extract the image. And before I do that, I made sure that I hit the autofocus button so that the camera is going to be at the same level as when the machine cuts out all of this lettering because that's the end goal with this first part of the video is we're going to extract the image, we're going to trace it and then cut it out and then compare how closely that cutout matches to where the laser actually went. I'm now ready to extract the image and just pull this box around, that looks good. And it'll look like it didn't do anything, but we'll see I've got this faint blue line. There actually is another duplicate image. And I'm going to control Z and put that right back where it was before and select that image. And now I can click on the sketch button and this is going to trace this image we just extracted. I can zoom way in and adjust these slide bars to get all the detail that I would like when I'm tracing out this image. Here we'll see I adjusted the threshold too much and I'm picking up some noise up at the top so I can back that down a little bit. This looks good. I'll click on confirm. Again, it doesn't look like it did a whole lot, but when I zoom in, we're going to see that I've got orange lines around all of that extracted image. I can take this and take this off to the side and here's the image that we extracted while that is still selected. I'm gonna delete that out. That looks like it's perfectly aligned. I'm going to put this on a cut layer. From here, I'm ready to hit the start button and send it over to the laser machine. Let's check out how this turned out. I put a ruler on top of the project and refresh the image. Let's check this out. I'll zoom in a little bit and we are going to see that from where the machine cut out to where it was supposed to cut, it is off by a little bit. The left and right, it's pretty much right on, but the up and down, there is a little bit of an air. And let's zoom in on this ruler and see how much that is. Here's the graphic cut line, and then here's the actual laser cut line. And we're going to see it's a little bit less than one millimeter. Now we create does clearly state that the camera system is accurate to about one or maybe even two millimeters. And I think the worst case I've ever seen was just over one millimeter, which is I think still pretty good. The next thing I want to check out is this black poster board that has a white core in the middle. I want to just laser score this so that I can see the white core in the middle. And what I'd like to do is draw a test pattern in each of the four corners and one in the middle. And once again, I want to see how accurate this camera is. And this test cardboard is going to do a perfect job of illustrating this. 
I'm going to hit the autofocus button and the machine will be all set up for that new material. And at the very end of that autofocus sequence, it is going to snap a new picture for me. I'll put this one right in the middle. All my targets are laid out and I'm ready to start. That didn't take very long at all. And let's check out how closely the laser ran to where we drew our targets. I'll zoom in on this first corner. And up and down, it looks like it's pretty good. And left and right, it seems like it's only off once again under one millimeter. I'll check out the other corners. This one is almost spot on. That is pretty darn close. And down to the bottom corner here. Once again, that is off about only one width of the, the trace of the laser itself. So those are right on the center. Looks pretty good as well. And that one looks pretty good too. In fact, I'm gonna grab the ruler, place that back inside, and we'll measure this center one to see just very precisely how far it's off or actually how close it is to where we drew the target. Yeah, this is not off by very much. It is well under one millimeter of air, so that looks pretty good. The test target is looking pretty good. The camera air is only about one millimeter, plus or minus a small amount, and I think that's really good for a camera system, really for any camera system on today's market. The next thing that I'd like to check out is placing some real world items inside the machine and seeing how well the software can trace those out. And for these items, I have a coffee sleeve from a popular coffee shop franchise. And I also have part of a shoe box with the logo. So we're gonna check out what these look like after I scan them in with the Vision Laser Machine. Hey, just breaking in for a quick second here to talk about when we're going to be scanning in some of these trademarked logos. I've got that shoe box cover right here. I'm scanning these in just for illustrative purposes for my own personal use. Just know that if you're scanning things in on your machine, make sure that you do so for personal use and that you're not selling those images or selling derivative works of that. The first thing I'm going to scan in is going to be the coffee sleeve. Before I extract this image, I do want to make sure that the machine is properly focused down to that work material. And in order to do that, I'll need to put some type of an object over the top of that. I'm just going to draw just a circle and oval and hit that autofocus button. I'm ready to click on extract image. And once again, we'll draw this box around our target area. And I can pull this box down below so that we have a clearer view of it. And I can click on sketch and start adjusting the threshold until I start tracing out the elements that I would like in this image. That looks pretty good. And maybe I'll move the noise reduction around a little bit and see if I can't clean this up a little bit more. I think that is about all the better I can get with this. And I'll click OK. And it's actually put the tracing underneath the uh, extracted image, which I can delete out. Now we're going to see that this did not trace as cleanly as the first one that we did, where we had the sheet of paper with black ink that said the laser channel with the logo underneath. This black and white contrast is the best scenario for the camera to capture a clean, crisp, detailed image and for the software to easily sketch or trace those out. Once we start getting into some of the darker colors where there's not as much contrast, we are going to find that we may not get the level of detail that we're always looking for. Back to our image here, we see that there's some elements here like across the top and the side and the bottom that maybe I just don't want those elements in. I'd like to delete those out. So I'm going to click on the button on the top, split, and that breaks all of these objects into individual objects where I can now go in and delete those out until I'm left with just the objects that I would like. 
and I've set this to fill and grave. So now we can see that we have something that kind of somewhat closely replicates the image that we scanned from above. And once again, I'm scanning this image just for illustrative purposes in this, but this would illustrate if you had something like your kids drew a picture and you wanted to scan it in and then laser engrave it onto something, this is a perfect way to do that. The last thing I'd like to check out is this shoe box with the logo. It's a red logo with that brown cardboard and in the camera and film industry, these two colors are not very contrasty. So the camera system may have a little bit of difficulty with it, but let's give it a shot and see how it turns out. And we're all set to start extracting this graphic. I'm just gonna pull this off to the side once again and hit the, uh, the sketch button and start moving these sliders around. And because this red and this brown are, you know, there's not a lot of contrast there, this threshold adjustment is very, very twitchy. Here we'll try some noise reduction. We got rid of some of that, and I'm actually going to type in 81 to see what that does. And I think that is about as good as this is going to get. So again, I'll take that image off to the side and delete that out. I'm going to select all of this. And I can, of course, split all that apart once again, take all this stuff at the top, delete that out. And I can zoom in on the A, and there's not much I can do with that. Yeah, we're going to see when I zoom in a little bit here that the outside trace lines, they're not clean and crisp the way they were with that coffee sleeve. Again, that coffee sleeve, it was a green logo with the brown and that offered a little bit more contrast than the logo that we've got up here, that red and that brown. And this is kind of the result of that. However, I can select everything and we'll move this up and see that it very closely resembles that. It looks all right, I've got the placement off just a little bit. Depending on the graphic that we're scanning in with the built-in camera system, we get varying different results, but that's not the only thing that the camera system is good for. If I have some irregular shaped objects like this cutout, or even just regular material like this simple square cutout, it's also a great way to be able to line those graphics up to this different work material. Let's check that out real quick. I'll take the rectangular wood and place that inside of the laser machine. I'll hit refresh just to initially get another image into the machine. Now I can take my graphic that I've already imported off to the side here and I can enlarge this. And we're going to see that my work material is purposely tilted inside of the machine a little bit to illustrate that I don't always have to place the work material perfectly squared up within the machine. I can just simply take my artwork and apply that same amount of tilt that I've got inside of here. Maybe I want this to be as large as it possibly can go and put it basically about in the center. And then I'd be ready to pick some settings and send this project out to the machine. And now I've got a good idea within about a millimeter or so of where this graphic is going to end up on my work material. Using a laser machine with a built-in camera system certainly opens up a lot of creative possibilities for me. As we saw in this video, I was able to capture and scan images from the machine and send it over to the software. I'm also able to use that same camera system to align my own graphics up to different size work materials placed inside of the machine. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a like, subscribe to the channel, or ring that notification bell. Not only does it help the Laser Channel grow, it's an awesome way to connect content like this with other great viewers just like you. Well, until we meet again in the next video, learn, create, and share.